Hello, everyone, and thank you so much for joining us for the Facilities Management Now Virtual Summit. I hope you're all enjoying the content so far. This session, Proactive Facility Succession Planning, Minimize the Impact of Facility Retirement, is sponsored by our friends from ARC Facilities. Thank you so much for making this session possible. Before we start today's program, I'd like to let you know that you can find our housekeeping items in the resources widget, which will help you familiarize yourself with today's platform. And if you have any technical difficulty, please click on the help widget. It has a question mark icon and covers common technical errors. If your technical issue does not resolve, please enter a question into the Q&A widget and our team will gladly assist you. And speaking of that Q&A widget, we will be hosting a live Q&A session at the end of today's event. So I hope you all came with questions for our speaker. You can submit them by using the Q&A widget I just mentioned. And as an additional reminder, please have your media player up and open as we do have animations for you as part of the presentation. All right, to kick off today's presentation, I'd like to take a moment to make a few introductions. My name is Karina Cruz from Simplify Media and the Facilities Management Advisor, and I'm here to be your moderator for the session. I'm joined by our guest speaker, David Trask. David is the National Director at ARC Facilities, and to read his full bio, you can open the speaker bio widget. Thanks so much for being with us today, and David, over to you. Hey, thank you so much, Karina, and thank you everyone for joining me today. What we're really going to talk about today is a universal challenge that we, we've all faced, but in particular, this has happened and been uh, exasperated by, by COVID. I mean, it, this is a challenge. I've talked to hundreds of facilities managers, facilities directors, uh, VPs of operations, and this is top of mind. I can't tell you how many calls I've had over the last month, two months, where retiring workers has been a compounded problem, but how do we bridge that knowledge gap? So let's take a look at a couple of things here. And first of all, you know, many facility teams are saying goodbye to key staff folks. So think about how many folks you're gonna lose in the next five years. Think about how many of your lead electricians, your lead plumbers, your HVAC people who have been with you for a long time. They're, they're gonna leave shortly in the next few years. Well, on, on average, roughly 30% of facilities workers plan to retire in the next five years. Think about that. Look at this quote here. To me, it's not the number of people, it's the number of experience, number of years of experience and institutional knowledge that will be irreplaceable. This guy said, within three years, I'll probably use, lose 100 plus years of experience. Think about the key people on your team that are set to walk out that door. Think about that. And how is that gonna impact you when your lead HVAC guy walks in and, and gives his notice? It's, it's gonna be a, a, a problem. And just really think about those types of things and those types of people on your team as we go through this presentation. So what we've gotta do is plan for tomorrow. A large contingent of the workers were already in the process of retiring or about to re retire prior to COVID. So think about your, your situation again. I, I was just talking about or talking to an organization that's a large uh, a higher ed institution down in the Southeast US. And they offered an early retirement to a, a huge part of their facilities team as part of their, their cutbacks. Well. It, they were expecting 20, maybe 25 people to retire out of their staff, which is, which is literally over 400 people on staff. They had 70 take it, 70. This included almost all of their lead electricians, HVAC guys and gals, and their plumbing teams. All of those people just walked out. They had 70 people. Now, they, they thought it would be a great early, early uh retirement gift, they were giving a four-month salary. Here's the problem, though. They didn't think ahead. They offered it contingent on them giving two to three weeks notice max. I mean, it was a snowball. So they rushed to get, get uh, career fairs set up, and they hired, or they were, they were having people interviewed on the spot. And they had all these different department heads literally interviewing people. They had 68 applicants that came in on the spot over this two days of, of, uh, of these career fairs. But they already had over 80 open positions within the facilities department before that happened. So 
So it's a compounded problem. So one of the, the benefit side effects of, of those career fairs was it helped internal departments who those facilities leads, all those different departments within facilities and maintenance and operations, they actually were able to pool talent too and, and, and really share some of the uh, interviews with the, or some of the uh, applicants that they received within their interviews with some of those other departments. But again, they're still filling and trying to backfill that huge, huge loss that they had. It's, again, it's a problem. But let's take a look at some of the things that also also make that problem come to light here. One is look at these photos. Everybody's got one of these. Everybody's got a plan rip. I, I, I can't tell you how many times I go into a, a potential client's office or a client's office and they'll say, oh, well, we've got a CMMS or we've got our control system. We've got all these other systems, these softwares that, that manage all these documents and all this stuff. And I'm like, why do you still have a plan rip? And it's just crickets. This is a problem. Those legacy folks that you have on your team could go into this room and probably pull any drawing out of that room or any, any, any you know, roll of, of drawing out of that room or out of that cabinet or hang, up, hang on those stick files and know what, what that renovation was in, in 1978 or 1985 or whatever. It's a handful of folks on your team that can go into that room and know exactly where something is. That's a, that's a problem. Well, here's another problem. Many of you, I'm sure, on the end of your projects, when you get that closeout package, you just get a CD or a thumb drive that has a whole bunch of files on it, just like this. They're not named. They're not by project. They're not by discipline. And well, some of these are by discipline. But again, what project do they go to? It's just an unorganized mess. And then they get dumped on a share drive someplace that only a handful of folks can access. That's a problem. It's no different than those plan room photos that I just showed you. How do you know where to go to find this stuff? Well, here's the biggest problem. Just go ask Carl. He knows where everything is. Everybody's got a Carl or a Bob or a Tom or a, a Betty or whoever on the team who's been there for 30 years, 25 years, 40 years. Everybody's got one, two, five, ten of these, these, these folks that are set to retire. Well, think about that. These folks are going to walk out that door with all that institutional knowledge. Everybody's got, a, got somebody on their team that is in this, this person's shoes. It's a problem. Well, what do you do when Carl walks into your office, sits, in the, sits down in the chair across from your desk and says, listen, I'm giving my notice. Pardon me, but that's your come to Jesus moment. That's your what the heck am I going to do now? He just gave me two, three weeks notice. Okay, I can't even hire somebody by the time he's gone. So what do you do? And think about this. How many times do you think Carl's going to answer his phone after he leaves? I, I can't tell you how many times I've talked to folks and they said, yeah, the guy just ended up changing his phone number. We were calling him all the time. My night guy would call him. Well, that was about the last straw. He changed his number. It's a, it's a huge problem. These folks know more about your building than you do in most cases. These folks know where the bodies are buried, okay? These folks know every change that's happened over the years. It's stuck in their head. They, know, they just know. When, you, when you're trying to find a water isolation valve, you go down the hallway, and it's a third tile up on the right, and there's a blue, blue dot sticker up on the ceiling tile, on the grid. Okay? The new guy doesn't know that. Well, the new guy's on night shift, and you just had a water leak in that particular area. What is the shutoff? Well, let me call Carl. That's what happens over and over and over again. So you got to ask yourself, why aren't we capturing that stuff before he leaves? Be proactive, and we're going to talk about that even more. So... Here's some just kind of did you knows. Remember that image on the right? Well, 65% of buildings still store documents in paper format. 65%. These are IFMA stats. Nearly one in three buildings in the U.S. is over 50 years old, and approximately 70% of buildings in the U.S. are over 20 years old. What those rolls of drawings mean, those piles that are crammed in those cubby holes right there, 
Those are projects. Those are closeout docs. I'm not telling you anything you don't know. But which one uh, affected room 102 or room 505 in your building? Do you know? Well, Carl might know. And if Carl doesn't know, who would know? Well, we're going to go into this room. We're going to dig through all those rolls of drawings. We're going to lay them out on the table, and we're going to try and figure it out. Well, what if you don't have the most up-to-date drawings? What if you have uh, you have some drawings that are missing because an electrician walked out and never brought them back, or a plumber, a third-party plumber that you guys are working with grabbed a, a drawing and just never brought it back, or it's coffee stained, or it's shredded, or it's faded. Those drawings aren't getting any better. So you have to ask yourself, what can you do to make this stop? This is an age-old problem. It's a big problem. That legacy information on these drawings is critical for you to be able to maintain and operate your building. But paper, like I said, it's not getting any better. It's going to fade. It's going to get shredded. But if you're digital, you can extract intelligence out of that information. Make it searchable, like you're searching for any other document on your, on your computer or on your phone. Also be able to share that information. The key here is get it digital. Getting it digital protects your data from that loss and damage. But I did a couple of, uh, of polls on LinkedIn. This is, this is a few, uh, few months ago. And one of them was I asked, how many of your buildings are over 20 years old? And you can see here, 21% or one to five, but look at that bottom number. 45% had 16 plus buildings. These are school districts. These are large municipalities. These are manufacturers all across the board. I could see who, what industries they were in. But, but again, every one of these buildings that's over 20 years old has how many projects? How many projects do you do on your buildings every year? The more projects you do, it just adds more roles to that pile that's in that plan room. It's just cramming more stuff in there. Well, what drawings are go to what? What years did you, know, did you renovate the, uh, the third floor, fourth floor, whatever? It's a problem. What we're going to talk about is how you can fix that too. And here's another poll I did on retire, how many of your folks are going to retire in the next, you know, five years? It, you know, this is a, this is a big one. I, I got a, a phone call from a municipality up in New York about this, and he had four guys on his team. Had it at, when I posted this, he had four guys on his team that actually retired three weeks apart, okay? Four of them. Two of them were his electricians. One was an HVAC guy. One was a plumber. All leads. They were all hired about the same time. They all had over 30 years in. It's compounded by he's got a limited labor pool to hire from, too. He's competing with you know, distribution centers, manufacturers. They're all in the same you know, geographic area from him, all pulling for that same labor pool. But he's had to raise salary uh, and benefit options to, and even offered an early signing bonus or a signing bonus to get people – to, to come on board, but he's having trouble retaining them because he's got that big plan room, giant plan room, and they, they get so frustrated, they're ripping their hair out trying to find, you know, the most le recent electrical drawings for, for any part of his, this one building he was telling me about, and the guy's just ripping his hair out because he can't get a hold of even the guy who just left. So he's having to go just poke holes in, in walls. He's trying to, you know, trace lines. It's just a mess. And again, it's an old, old building, but again, you see the problem here. It's, it's, when these folks walk out the door, it's, it's a big problem. So ask yourself, how many of your folks are going to retire within the next five years, and what's your plan? So the rising retirement rates for facilities workers combined with outdated documents, again, it's, it's just it's a perfect storm. It's a compounded problem because – You've got a handful of folks who know where stuff is, and then you've got a bunch of folks on your team that rely on those folks who know where everything is. It's a snowball, and it's not going to get any better. There's, there's, no, there's no room for, you know, let's just, it's job security, so let's call Carl. Because, you know, Carl knows where everything is, and Carl's not going to tell anybody where stuff is. He thinks it's job security or whatever. Okay? Those days are past. 
Because what do you, as, as Carl's boss, what are you going to do? Is that acceptable to you? So you're putting all of your, your eggs in one basket on a handful of folks when everybody on the team should have access to that stuff. Everybody should. And think about this as the, the legacy of, of you know, Carl to pass this information on. Make it a mandate that you have to share this information. But here's the problem. Do you even have tools to do that? You have to start with documenting. Document where that stuff is. Document what happened in your life of your building. And then make sure that that information is shareable. Let's take a look at some of those things. So the challenge is, again, quali finding qualified workers. It's you know, only a small number of colleges are, are offering you know programs in, in to be electricians and and plumbers and HVAC techs, um, but there's other things that you can do too. You can partner with folks, partner with local, some of your local schools, partner with unions. I, I had a great conversation with a guy that he built a strong relationship with a union, and they're actually mentoring and sharing. Uh, they're doing apprentice programs within the union, and one guy is paying the salary of a guy who's an electrician. He's, he's an apprentice over at another organization, and he's learning uh, the, the different tools of the trade, so to speak, over at another company. But then he's going to come back to his company at the hospital, and he's going to work with them after he's gone through that one or, one or two years of apprenticeship. I mean, it's, it's just a win-win. But then those uh, people within the union can move around as well. Connect with military groups who help transition outgoing vets into the workforce. I think for me personally, this, that's huge. You've got all these folks who are going to be filling, filling the market that have visible trades that can help you immediately. They come right out of the military. They transition over to you. That's great. Why wouldn't you do that? Also, IFMA predicts that between 50,000 and 100,000 facilities management jobs will be open over the next five to 10 years. That's a big number. That's a big number of folks who are retiring, and a lot of those folks have moved up. They were tradespeople. They moved up into that role, and they know everything about those buildings, too. That's a big number. So how can companies address this issue? Well, let's take a look at some of those things. Well, technology, think about the technologies you use today, but also there's other technologies that can solve succession planning in facilities, and that's using AI, artificial intelligence. You know, documents, even if they're paper, can be scanned in, OCR so that you can read those. It, it, the, the, the software can pick up that information and organize it and read that information that's on those large format drawings. Also, attaching QR codes to, to equipment so you don't have to carry around a bunch of stuff. You can pull your phone out of your pocket and scan a QR code and access all of that information right away. Oh, it sounds like somebody came off mute. There we go. Um, also, mobile optimized software. Think about it this way. You use apps on your phone all the time. You use Facebook. You use Twitter. You use Yelp, uh, you use all kinds of different things. And, and even back to the QRs, how many times recently with COVID have you walked into a restaurant and their menu isn't paper anymore, or, or it's not a, a, a thing that you grab? You scan a QR code and it shows the menu for that restaurant. You're doing it on your phone. It's mobile. Everybody is accessing stuff today on their phones. You know, I, I do a lot of education sessions at, at conferences around the country. And one of the first things that I ask is, raise your hand if you've got a smartphone. Everybody raises their hand. The, you know, the younger folks in the crowd, the older folks in the crowd, they all grab their phone and raise it in the air. And I'll say, that's great. How many of you people can access all of your critical building documentation, including your as built your warranties, your equipment location, shutoff locations, all on your phone? And I would say 99% of the people in the audience put their hand out. And I ask them, why the hell not? It's 2021. You all have a smartphone. Why can't you access your critical building information? You're, you're shut off. So when something goes sideways in the middle of the night, 
Why can't you roll out of bed, grab your phone, and text message a shutoff location to a guy who's standing in the doorway of your building? Because what happens right now is most people have to jump in their car or they have to try to remember or they call Carl. That's a problem. That water is going to keep running if you don't find that shutoff. That water keeps running until you shut it off. So why wouldn't you have that information available on your phone? You have everything else on your phone. I do my banking on my phone. You should be able to access everything on your phone. And we're talking mobile first. So always keep the critical building information available to your entire team. Everybody should be looking at the same stuff. Not in one person's head, not in three people's heads. Everybody should be able to access the stuff to do their job so they can act immediately to access that information on their phones. The information no longer exists in a one person or three or four people's heads. But the critical information is at everybody's fingertips. Everybody uses apps every day. You can also should be able to share that information out, not just with internal stakeholders and first responders, but also with your contractors, with your, tr your, your, your trades that you're outsourcing HVAC to or whatever. Give them access to the stuff so they can do their job faster. Not digging for stuff, not waiting you know, two, three days for you to respond. No, no, no. Everything should be accessible on your phone, all of it. So here's what that should look like. Let's take a look at that. So you should have a video popping up here. Um, and what this looks like here is how do I access all of my building drawings? So you click on a building campus. Here's your building. Click on it. All these overlay color-coded areas show what renovations touched what part of my building over the years, over time. That's how fast you should be able to access it from your phone, from your tablet, or your desktop. But instant access to what drawings touch what part of my building. Now, let's talk about those QR codes like I mentioned. So you've got, you walk up to a machine, you pull your phone out of your pocket, scan a QR code, and then here's all the information about that machine, all of it. So you've got... Think about you've got your O&M, you've got warranties, you've got belt sizes, you've got all of your uh, uh, filter sizes, who worked on it last. You can attach any uh, third-party uh, vendor information, links out to Granger or wherever you order your parts from. You can put all of that stuff right attached to the piece of equipment that that QR code is stuck on. Scan it, and everybody has access to it. Your vendors, your team. Everybody can pull that stuff up in just a couple of seconds. That's what we're talking about. You, at the end of the day, you want your team to be able to just open that stuff up, grab it, and do their job. Well, here's the last one here. And this is, again, like we were talking about with shutoffs. So, again, click on it. Click on a building. Go to the shutoff button and have all of those shutoffs identified, including photos, including what does it shut off. It's, it's equally important to know where it is as to what does it shut off. Imagine clicking on a shutoff and having a zone map showing where, what part of the building it shuts off, what rooms does it shut off, what does it serve. And knowing that my new guy who's on the you know, night shift and it's 1 o'clock in the morning has the same access as Carl. And now here's the other thing too, and I cannot stress this enough. You have to be able to add to it. Your guys and gals on your team are going to find stuff as they go every day. So rather than stick a blue dot on a ceiling tile trying to identify where something is, and then, oh, crumb, I forgot to tell everybody where that is that I found. Or I mentioned it in one of our meetings that nobody's going to remember. It's not documented. If it, I'm a firm believer, if it's not documented, it doesn't exist. Because you're, then you're relying on everybody to remember what some guy told us in a meeting that one day. That's not acceptable. It's, it's got to be documented. And then also you have to be able to add new stuff as you find it. You guys find stuff all the time. You rip open a wall and you're like, oh, wow, there's, there's ductwork right there. Or, or there's piping behind that wall. 
you know, document it. Take a picture of it. You should be able to do that. If you're not, you got to ask yourself why not. So now let's talk about some of the ways that we're, uh, facility teams are ready to operate in the post-COVID era. So think about contact, contact access, gosh, contactless access to information. Remember what I said, you, something goes sideways on your building and you're at home. You should be able to access that stuff. Now, your team, your facilities maintenance teams are not stationary. They're in the field. So why would you want it or why do you have it now where they have to walk back to a plan room? No. They should be able to go from building to building to building and access all of the information for whatever building they're going into. If you can't, that's a problem. And most of the facility softwares that are out there don't address that. That's, you know, our company has built something that does that very thing. But, but again, you have to be fluid. Your buildings are not static. So when you, your team is, is mobile, they're running around all over the place. When they go from this building to that building, they should be able to click on the new building they're going to and have access to all the documents, all the as built, all the warranties, all the equipment locations, shutoff locations, um, zone maps for where they shut off, all of that stuff. Because these guys and gals, if you've got a large campus where they've got you know, you know, 50, 20, 100 buildings, they're not gonna remember where every single thing is in every single building. And if you're relying on their memory, that's a big problem. What if they forgot? They haven't been to that building in two years, or they haven't been to that building in eight, nine months but they haven't shut anything off in that building in a long time. Why can't they access the shutoffs for every building? But also this helps with meeting social distancing requirements, no more plan rooms where you're trying to cram a bunch of people into that, that plan room. And also it avoids additional delays with those social distancing requirements. You, you know, if you've got limited staff, I've heard a couple of folks that I've talked to where they're, they're doing staggered shifts to, to get everybody in. Um, it, it's just kind of all over the board with what folks are doing. But again, you sh with you having mobile access to the information, you can access it wherever the heck you are. Also, technology should enable the new employees to access it as effortlessly as the, the people have been there forever. It, again, provides instant access to even the new guys. It stores all the information in one spot, one place. Everything's accessible there. It also eliminates endless trips back and forth to the plan room. How many times are you jumping in the cart, grabbing the set of plans, going out in the field, and then realize, crap, that's not the most recent plan. It's got to go back to the plan room. Or you're, you're taking pictures with your cell phone and running out there. Again, not the right plans. But here's an interesting thing. On average, there were industry studies that showed on average, people are spending between an hour and three hours a day looking for information. Think about that. How many more work orders could you get done if you got some of that time back? And we're not talking about just spending you know, one to three hours flipping through paper. No, it's the going back and forth, running back and forth, trying to get a hold of somebody who knows where something is. It's all that wasted time. But again, all available available through their mobile device. Wherever the heck you are, you access that information. Okay, so now also what we're gonna talk about here is succession planning is more than employing the right people. It's also about employing the right technology. So think about it this way. It's an investment in your people and technology that helps them do their job faster. That building information, you have it. It's somewhere, but you should have it all in one, so, uh, one spot. Succession planning in facilities management should encompass not just hiring the right person, but employing the right technology. Arming those folks with the right technology, those new people, when they walk in the door, they can respond quickly to an emergency or to do their day-to-day -day job, fixing stuff. Where's that HVAC? Where's the HVAC? Uh, where's uh, AHU number 12? Well, the new guy doesn't know. Why not? Why can't he access that stuff? I'm not sure where it is. You should be able to document where that stuff is so that he can find it in a couple of seconds on his phone and go right there. Not go back and forth, not call a bunch of people. No, that's a waste of time. 
we're talking about time. Get that time back, but also speed up the process for those new hires. And that's what we're talking about here is go from months of training to weeks. I can't tell you how many times it's, it's I've got – yeah, I got this guy that I just hired, and he's been shadowing each different department for the last year. Well, does he know where AQ 12 is? Oh, yeah, he does. And then I go up to that guy and say, hey, do you know where AQ 12 is? You go, I haven't got a clue. I've never worked on that. So how do you find it? I call Carl. You see the circle here. Give instant access to that building information to everybody. Speed up that training. New team members can focus on learning core competencies from those folks instead of trying to track down where is it. It's no, how do I fix it? What are some of the intricacies about, about that, that device, that machine? And then document that. Remember those pins that I showed where you click on a, a piece of equipment, scan that QR code, you can document all of that special stuff that's associated with that particular machine. You know, it requires a specific lubricant. It requires a special wrench, whatever. You can put all of that in the notes for that particular piece of equipment. Now, everybody sees that. The night guy, the, the guy who's on day shift, anybody can access that same stuff. It's a living, breathing thing. But what are you waiting for? I, I ask this all the time. What are you waiting for? Those guys, you know it's coming. They're going to leave. You know it's coming, and it's going to be a tidal wave. Proactively start capturing that institutional knowledge before it walks out the door. Again, what are you waiting for? Scan and digitize all that building information. That plan room should go away. Scan it in. Take all of those digital documentation that you've got, all those, those row after row of, of lines of all those different plan sheets that aren't named right, they're not organized, and then marry that up to the paper drawing so it's all in one spot. Everything, the paper and the digital, all in one spot, all organized, all named what it's supposed to be, project name, year, uh, discipline, all of that information, all in one spot, all organized. Choose a platform that's user-friendly. I, I heard this the other day. I was talking to a guy, and he says, you know, i got a bunch of my guys on my team that, that just aren't tech savvy. I said, really? Do they all have smartphones? Well, yeah. So they're not tech savvy, huh? Well, do they use Zoom? Oh, yeah, they use Zoom. We, use, we have meetings all the time. Do they you know, order food? Oh, yeah, they use, they use Yelp or they use DoorDash or they use whatever. Really? And they're not tech savvy. Whatever technology you put in your guys and gals' hands, it has to be easy or they won't use it. So ask yourself, is the technology that you're going to implore here, is it easy that anybody can use it? It has to be able to just push buttons just like you have on your phone, swipe, tap, get to every plan sheet, go to the index, go, click on a drawing, go straight to the drawing, click on a shutoff, go to the floor, click on the water. Boom, there's a photo of it, how to shut it off, and what does it shut off in my building. Instant access. Mobile access is critical for efficiency. It also maintains a single source of truth, all in one spot. But also, hire tech-savvy employees. Hire the younger folks. Hire the folks who are more tech-savvy. Hire some of the, the other folks who are in the middle of their career who are tech-savvy. And then... Grow this as part of your SOP within your organization. This is what we're doing moving forward. So you don't get into this jam again. Because right now, it's a tidal wave that's happening from industry to industry to industry. I have hundreds of phone calls between conferences and, and just meetings I'm, I'm booking through, through LinkedIn, and people are calling my cell all the time asking me, what do I do? This is, this is impacting me. And I tell them all the same thing. You have to take a first step. And again, what are you waiting for? So the path forward, what that really looks like here is it's a combination of retiring workforce and talent shortage signals challenging times ahead for facilities management. The wave is coming. Okay, it may be two years for you. It may be five years for you. For you, you know, for you six years, seven years, whatever, it's coming. 
So think about the businesses that plan strategically and employ the right technology, and again, the right technology, to not only attract and retain high quality facility teams, but will find themselves positioned for the next decade and beyond. So think about it this way. You have to start today. You have to start now. What are you waiting for? It's not, your situation is not getting any better. Put a strategic plan in place where you can move forward. Take the first step. Put a tool in these guys and gals' hands so you can start capturing that stuff today. Think about how many times you're, you're running around or how many times Carl's phone rings or your phone rings in the middle of the night because something goes sideways. Water leaks happen all the time. Not so much gas, but water all the time. Think about how many of those types of instances that have happened in your facilities over the last you know, two, three, four years, last year. Heck, I, I, I can't tell you how many times I, I work in hospitals a lot, and these folks will say, oh, yeah, I had five last week. That's a problem. Figure out how you can maximize your team. Get a tool in their hands that they can use today. Today, not tomorrow, today. And then that's your move forward plan to really streamline your processes and capture that institutional knowledge and, and before it walks out that door. So let's, uh, let's take, open it up and let's take some questions from some folks. Thanks so much, David. So um, the first question we have here is if this uh, instant mobile access integrates into any CMMS. Yes, yeah. So essentially you can pull information back and forth. We're an open API system. So we actually allow systems to pull information from us and, and vice versa. A lot of the CMMSs out there, uh, we export out databases and import them into ours all the time. It's very easy to do. Um, you gotta ask yourself, we really identify what you're doing in your CMMS and what are some of those gaps, and then we fill those gaps. We're not a CMMS, we don't do any of that. We actually are document, uh, we, they're a document management company, so we manage all of that documentation, uh, take all that paper, get rid of it. It's all scanned in, organized, and put into the system. Our system actually also maps out equipment with our team walking and doing site walks. So think of this as a uh, site assessment. We walk every floor, every room. We physically, our teams map out where all this stuff is. And then we attach that exported database from your CMMS with all of that information is now attached to it. Make, model, serial number, any additional information that you've got in there with locations, all of that. And now it's visual as well. There are photos of everything. So again, integration is very, very simple. The next one we have is, what do you do with all the files that you've digitized and organized on the hard drives? Yeah, so all of that information, whether it's paper or digital, uh, we're, again, we've been in the document, uh, large format and construction document industry for over 50 years. And at the end of the day, we organize all that information and put it all in one spot. So even the paper or the digital is renamed what it's supposed to be named. So again, you've got year of the project, you've got discipline, you've got building name, you've got all the other relevant information with regards to that. But then you also, our system actually has patented software that reads and OCRs the large format drawing. All of that drawing information is now, is now searchable. So you can search by discipline, you can search by not just project name and all of that, you can search within the document itself and find inf relevant information for that particular building and that particular drawing set. Um, so a little bit of a follow-up, it looks like, to that question is, do we have to do all the scanning, scanning or is that a service that you provide? Oh no, it's turnkey. We literally back a truck up we have 150 service centers in the U.S. Uh, we back it up and pick up all that information, take it away, and then we deliver it back in an app and a, a device and devices so that your team can access it immediately. We do all that heavy lifting ourselves. You don't have to do very very limited on your end at all, other than say it's the documentation in that room, and then we do ask that your uh, team does a site walk with us 
Um, but that's very minimal impact on your team and all. All right, next one. What are the best ways to prepare my team to integrate new technology? I, I think the biggest thing is you have to start with an SOP saying this is what we're going to do. And, you know, it's, it's kind of that come to Jesus moment. It's the, guys, listen, we know this is coming. We can't keep relying on Carl or Bob or Betty or whoever it is on the team. They're going to retire. And I can't tell you how many of the technicians I talk to that they, they know it's coming. And pardon me, they say, we're, we're going to be screwed. That's the way they say it. And it's, it's the truth. They are so reliant on, on a handful of folks to, to help them do their job that it's, it's scary for them. And I can't tell you how many times I've heard where, you know, folks are saying, well, you know, before he leaves, I'm leaving because I don't have to deal with this. It's going to be a mess when he leaves. Well, think about that. One guy or gal on your team is going to leave and people are going to quit their job or go look for another job because they know it's going to be a mess. That, that, that's, that's not great. So you need to be proactive and address that up front. Address it before it's too late. So another follow-up question it looks like to um, having years of paper in the building is, uh, is the service available on site or do they have to come to you? I, I'm sorry, can you repeat the question? I didn't hear the end. Asking if the service is available on site. Is that service available on site? Meaning, do you scan on site or take it off site? Yeah, yeah. We, we actually yeah. have services where we can bring scanners on site as well. It just depends on what the client, uh, what the client's requirements are. Yeah. Okay. And when the tenured engineers or facilities techs are gone, um, so is the need of knowledge of the buildings. So how are you enabling your existing engineers or facilities techs to be efficient day to day with accessing critical building information? Yeah, so at the end of the day, what you got to look at it this way. I've had folks that, you know, the guy's already left. Okay, the, the legacy person who's, who knows where everything is has already left. You can look at this as also a move forward. This is your building off of it. You have to set your baseline and move forward. So capture as much information as you can. And, again, like I was saying, it has to be fluid enough that you can add as you find stuff. You know, this is not a static thing. Your building's changing. It changes all the time. But you also find stuff in your day-to-day -day job. You pop a ceiling tile because you're, you know, you're, you're working on a light fixture, and you're like, oh, crumb, there's a, there's a, a, a shutoff for, for water or med gas or what, whatever. There's something up there, and you can pull your phone out of your pocket while you're standing on the ladder and take a picture of it, and as soon as you hit save, everybody on the team sees it. So it has to change and be fluid enough to change as you – find stuff as your building changes, as you do renovations, and that's what this does. Our system actually takes all of those legacy drawings for those buildings, and we organize it in a couple of different ways. One, there's a list view. So all your drawing closeouts for every single renovation you've had on a building are listed by date and by year. But here's the challenge with that. That list, that's great. That's more than most folks have now, where it shows all the different renovations in a building, but looking at a list, it doesn't necessarily tell me what floors it touched. I have to click on each individual set of plans and open it up and say, oh, well, this one only touched the first floor, or this one touched the third and fourth floors, or whatever. The unique thing is our system actually maps out and does overlays and shows you what drawing sets touched what parts of what building, floor to floor, year over year, and color codes it and shows you that these are the three drawing sets that touch the southeast corner of my building over the life of this building, or these 10 drawing sets touch the entire building, but it touched just these floors. That's the intuitive part of this, of our system, is it shows you what drawings touched where year over year, and they're organized, again, by date and what that project name was. And it shows you what parts of the buildings they touched. How do I schedule a demo so I can show this to the rest of my team? Uh, see that email at the top there, solutions at arcfacilities.com? You send that to me. 
and we will get it. We'll get you a demo scheduled right away. And I'll go into depth. We'll go into depth on on the entire system. Um, and it's module based, so it's kind of a plug and play. Think about it. If you know drawings are your biggest problem, great, start there. If uh, equipment and shutoff locations are, are your your uh, uh, biggest issue right now, great, start there. For us, we don't care. It's let's fix the problem and move forward because you can always bolt on one of the other modules down the road. All right, next one I have, I have four guys scheduled to retire in the next six months. How do you recommend we start? Call me tomorrow. <laughs> we, we, we need to talk because think about it this way. You've got, you've got that many people set to retire, and if you don't start this today before they leave, you're going to be relying on your guys and gals who don't know necessarily where everything is to try and hunt that stuff down. We can get a tool in their hands right away and start documenting that stuff right away. All we need to get started is basic floor plans of your building, and we can get on site quickly. We have offered early retirement and furloughed several employees already, including some who knew the most about our buildings. How do we capture the knowledge when it is already gone? Um, I've worked with a couple of people in the past where they've actually um, – it's almost like a consultant, um, temporary consultant thing where they brought those people back to do the site walk with us. Otherwise, we've had the most remaining tenured folks on the team do the site walk with us and capture it. Again, this is a fluid thing that, that you update as you find new stuff. Um, I've heard from a lot of folks that they'll just basically say, well, I, I can't even remember, you know, where the, the isolation valve is for – the you know the third floor southeast wing, um, and that's the most tenured guy or gal on the team. So again, I recommend that you get a tool in their hands quickly. If they're already gone, consider bringing them back, and we can work with that person just for a week, two weeks, whatever it takes um, to get on site and capture all of that information before they're gone. Uh, a lot of times they'll volunteer to come back and and work with us, but the most of the time we'll still be able to capture most of that information with the guys and gals on the team who are remaining because we can piece together all of that stuff that those folks know, the plumbers, the electricians, uh, and track that stuff down. My teams, when we do field walks um, and site surveys like this, it's, it's, their heads are on swivels. I mean, when we're walking through the buildings, I, I'm actually on site at a hospital right now. And when we're on site walking the building, we're, our heads are on swivels looking for every electrical panel. We're looking behind doors. We're opening every closet, uh, every door, every, you know, we're going out on every roof and identifying all of this information based on the floor plans. And it's, it's abundantly clear when something's missing. There are big holes where there's no red dots showing that there's a piece of equipment or a piece of, uh, uh, you know, uh, a, uh, uh, no exits in a part of a building or, or strobes or, or pull stations or fire extinguishers. It's, it's really clear when you're missing something in a part of a building. Um, but again, it's, it's all about start today. Those people are leaving in the next six months. Yeah, you need to, to call that number or send them an email to that uh, email address at the top there right away. And we let's talk. Next one, someone is asking, is the speaker's contact information going to be available? So referring to you, David. Is the what? I'm sorry? Someone's asking for your contact information. Yeah, my, uh, my email address is david.trask, T-R-A-S as in Sam K, at arcfacilities.com, just like you see at the top, it's at arcfacilities.com. I guess david.trask at arcfacilities.com. Okay, and next, how long would it take to get your solution up and running? And do we have to scan all of our building documents ourselves? No, we do all the scanning. You don't do any of that. Um, that's pretty, pretty easy. You don't have to scan anything. Again, we just back the truck up, pick everything up, take it away. You don't have to do any of that. Um, the, the digital drawings that you've got or digital files that you've got, I'll either give you a – uh, uh, a hard drive, or I'll give you a link to upload all that information, um, and we take all of that stuff too. You don't have to mess with any of that. 
um, very simple. The timelines are traditionally, say, 60 to 120 days max, uh, depending on, again, that's that's a phased approach for some, we've done some work for some school districts that have hundreds of buildings spread over, you know, a huge geographic area. Um, and they want to take that off in chunks. But again, we're talking the, you know, the 90 day range um, to do the, even the chunks. So it's really based on volume of, of buildings and, and, uh, and where they are. But I have the ability to ramp up for whatever comes in. Again, we're a publicly traded company. I have 150 offices in the U.S. So if we have a, a tight deadline or a tight timeline, we've got to get something done. We just ramp up. It's not a big deal. Next one is how, how do you recommend we go about capturing the knowledge of our tenured staff? That's the uh, that's where I would recommend the app. That's what what our app does is we put this tool in their hands. We do training with these folks, and uh, again, it's a move forward. So these folks will have this in their hand as soon as I get floor plans. They're uploaded. We do training with them. We're, we're live. We're we're a go. And when we're updating this and we're adding that information in with your team, and then they add it after the fact when we when we leave. Um, they will be fully functional, fully up and running, and knowing how to use the app when we walk out that door. Okay, and we can do additional trainings. That's all included. There's no no additional um, there's no additional fees or anything like that. We'll do as many trainings as your team needs. You get new hires, great. We do new trainings, even one on ones, whatever they need. Okay, it looks like that was the last question. Um, attendees, if you have any more questions, please feel free to populate. All right, that looks like it, um, it was all, David. Great. Oh, we got, looks like we've got one coming in. Oh, yep, one just came in. So someone is asking about the security on the app. How do you limit unauthorized access? Yeah, so ours is hosted in AWS, the Amazon Web Services. It is uh, two-factor authentication to, it is encrypted information when it's going, it's in the system, it's encrypted, it's encrypted both directions when it goes out and to and from the mobile devices as well. We are all, also ISO certified um, and we have the same banking level encryption uh, you know, that most of your local credit unions and things like that are hosted in AWS, um, and we carry those same same credentials over. Um, it is user-based, so you have different user levels you can set up where uh, read-only or view-download, uh, you control, somebody can add equipment or modify equipment uh, details and things like that. So you do have some controls there, too. There are admin levels who can control who can do and see what as well. Okay, any other questions? I'll give it a few moments. We got another one. Um, in regards to uh, just the security of the data, um, uh -huh. I guess if it, it looks like government work is what they're wondering about. Sure. Sure. We have some municipalities that are on our, our systems as well. Um, Orange County, Florida uh, is in our system. They've got roughly, I think it's 400 buildings uh, across their their large, it, it, it basically encompasses Orlando um, and Orlando proper. Um, but yeah, it, we've got several municipalities that are that are within our system. And uh, we've, we've got credit unions that are clients of ours too that are in our system. So um, we can share out those white papers and uh, security credentials uh, for, for our network as well. That's not a problem. We do that all the time. And a follow-up question on um, yeah. any federal government work, the security of information? Oh, he's talking, I'm sorry, I misunderstood. He's talking about FedRAM. Yeah, so we're in process right now of, of getting our system in FedRAM as well. Yeah, that's that's actually in process. We've got several uh, federal clients that uh, we're working with that uh, that have that requirement as well. So we're going through that process right now as we speak. Okay, 
Okay, any more questions, attendees? Please feel free to populate the Q&A widget right now. All right, awesome. That looks like um, that is all. Um, thank you so much, David, for your presentation today. Uh, that wraps up day one of the Facilities Management Now Summit, and thank you all for joining us um, in ARC Facilities for engaging our final session. We hope to see you all tomorrow for day two of the Facilities Management Now Summit. Enjoy the rest of the afternoon.